uh, NBA analyst Charles Barkley came out and basically said that when speaking about the case, well, first let me say this. In our society, we, as melanated people who consider ourselves like, I don't know if you want to say conscious or aware, whatever you want to say, right? We need to figure out a way on how to deal with black people, melanated people, who consistently go against us, right? So when we talk about the coon verbiage that some of us use when describing somebody black who knowingly or unknowingly throws us under the bus or knowingly or unknowingly says things that's going to damage us as a whole, I definitely put Charles Barkley in that category. So we need to figure out a way. My personal opinion right now, ostracizing them may be the easiest method, meaning making sure that black people don't take them serious. But the unfortunate part is there's a lot of people, a lot of melanated people in our country who wouldn't be considered conscious, quote unquote, who only watch the news, who only watch TV and kind of take whatever they're being given from these platforms and hear to hear Charles Barkley, who basically said about the Breonna Taylor case, we shouldn't lump them all together. And as I just categorized for you, you can lump her with Amon Aubrey. You can lump her case with George Floyd because it was mishandled by the police departments that are paid to serve us. They're not serving us. They're not l helping out what's in our best interest. That didn't happen in the, Bre the, the Breonna Taylor case. Charles, that didn't happen, right? He also went on to say that it's the case is different because the boyfriend shot at a cop. So here we go again with this bullshit. You have too much influence in our society. You have too big of a platform to look at all of the details. Now, what I'm thinking from hearing Charles Barkley talk now, from hearing him talk about the George Floyd shit, if you Google Charles Barkley and racism, every conversation he's had about racism has led back to black accountability. Yeah, we get wrong. Yeah, we get done wrong in this society. But black people have to be accountable. Black people have to start depending on themselves. And this is the problem with niggas who don't fuck with us. I, You mix in some true shit with a whole bunch of bullshit. You know what I mean? And again, let me be the first to say, there is nothing wrong with critiquing black people. There is nothing wrong with going against the grain when it comes to something all of us are moving towards and you think differently. There's nothing wrong with that. But the question is, is this out of love or you just don't give a fuck? See, from Charles, I'm be, I know for sure by everything he said, unless he's a completely different man in private, this shit ain't out of love. You don't even really give a fuck about us like that, Charles Barkley. You don't even really start. He sounds like a black man to me. Excuse me. They didn't, they didn't even really think about racism in that manner until you got on a platform. Now you got to start thinking about it. But it would do you. A great service, my G, if you read a little bit, if you took time. I know you got time, you got money and shit. Take time to read about some of our misfortunes, like the history of some of our misfortunes so you won't sound so fucking stupid, right? Because to say the man shouldn't have shot in the house, an intruder was coming in his house. I don't give a fuck if you had a warrant or not. If you don't announce yourself as police, I'm shooting too. Who wouldn't shoot? Charles, right? And look, over the past like five or six years, I think TNT has attempted to help get this nigga foot out of his mouth. How so? I think in like 2014, they had a series called American Race. He had another series called Race Card. So these are shows designed to shed a light on racism in America. But the problem is they got Charles Barkley as the moderator and this nigga don't really know shit about shit. So on this American race show, he's going to black churches, he's going to different communities, trying to have conversations about race. On one of them, he invited Richard Spencer, who's an all-out white supremacist, and you trying to have an intellectual conversation with a motherfucker who hate black people. Now, of course, if you were qualified, Charles, if you were qualified to have these conversations, then maybe that'll be a little bit different. If you were qualified to speak on this shit, just based on you, I don't mean like you gotta be some high political figure or you gotta be this extremely conscious person. Just read a little bit, family. 
read a little bit. But that's not the case with Charles because every time he comes down on us, the, the George Floyd shit, the George Zimmerman shit, he got on TV and said, I didn't see nothing wrong with George, what, what, what George Zimmerman did. You see what I'm saying? Now, many people in our society, black people in our society, are hell on men who date outside of their race. Now, as long as you lay down with that white woman and you get up attempting to empower black people, I don't have a problem with your race. Or I don't have a problem with you dating outside of our race. I don't have a problem with it. As long as you understand the empowerment of your people comes before any relationship you in, like real shit, right? But when you look at Charles Barkley and you look at all the comments he's made over the years, it kind of makes you feel like maybe because of his white wife, because of white circles he's in, because of him being so far removed from anything that we've had to go through as a people, his attitude is, I'm on their side. His attitude is, black folks just need to pick themselves up by their bootstraps. He's talking about black on black crime when white people kill each other 84% of the time as well, right? So all of these arguments, you can link those arguments back to some systematic endeavor that attempted to cut us at the knees so we can be disenfranchised, right? Now, yes, should we be accountable as black people? You're goddamn right. Should we make the best effort possible to raise our families and to be there for our kids and to work good job, all this shit? Yes. But to ignore the systematic injustices that we've had to face since slavery, there has been political policies meant to disenfranchise us up until today right so there hasn't really been a 10 20 year span in america where there hasn't been some policy on the books meant to disenfranchise people of color now of course some black people have found their way through this maze right they they found their way through this maze to be successful then they look back at all of us and say see i did it you could do it nah nigga you got lucky you got lucky uh, a lot of black people that come from the neighborhoods we come from do not have the wherewithal to avoid the pitfalls set up by this system. And that's just real shit. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm going to continue to call Charles Barkley a coon and any other black man who knowingly or unknowingly throws us under the bus without doing their research. I don't mind you critiquing anybody. Nobody is beyond reproach. But when you constantly make it seem as if we are the primary problem for our dysfunction. I'm not fucking with that. You see what I'm saying? So, man, if you can hear the sound of my voice, disregard Charles Barkley. Disregard Charles Barkley. Anything he says and any man like him, make sure you tell your kids, make sure you tell your, make sure you tell your family members, disregard what this nigga say because he don't mean us no good. And, and again, his rhetoric can be damaging because you can have black people on the fence, black people who haven't necessarily done their due diligence on history and things of that nature they could be on the fence and like charles barkley because he is a good because he he is a good analyst he was a great basketball player so because of his influence because of who he's been in society people will listen to him and say okay maybe he's telling the truth maybe that's no he's not right he's not correct and he don't mean no good to the black community at large and to me also if you a black man who is gonna be ultra critical then to me, your criticism has to match your work. So you need to point to me, Charles. Instead of giving some money here to HBCUs here, money to HBCUs there, he's helped build up the college he went to, the, the high school he went to. All that shit is fine and dandy. But what have you done to build the actual black community you're from? What have you done to build the black community at large? When have you went on a platform and spoke about us unapologetically? See, a lot of these niggas get on TV and have these different positions where they feel like, okay, I say the shit that's happening to us is wrong, but I got to end it with we doing it to ourselves. You know what I mean? And that's an age-old trick that I'm getting tired of seeing from these grown-ass men. Nigga, you 50-something years old and this is how you think? Another thing, you don't got to say shit. Do you know that? Just because you black on TV, if you don't know about the situations, if you haven't done your due diligence on the situations, I would prefer you to be quiet, to not say nothing. Nigga, no comment is a smart comment. Now, now again, sometimes silence speaks volumes, but you can't be so damaging with your tongue, man. Because he talk about all this shit about what we should be.